Kia ora team and welcome to episode 36 of Yarns with Beef and Matt, brought to you by Alice Katie and Frog Grips. I'm Beef. I'm Matt. And joining us today, she's one of Australia's phenomenal semi-finals athlete, coming in seventh at the Torian Pro last year, Tamworth's very own Georgia Pryor. How are you, mate? Hello, I'm good. How are you guys? Good. Good. Very good. I'm glad you said Tamworth. We've said Tamsworth every time. Um, oh. Yeah, but Julia Hannaford corrected us. That yeah, no yeah, S. no, pr- no plural, no, just Tamworth. Yeah, mm, Tamsworth sounds. That's how it should be spelt. That's just really. Not, yeah, so to me, that sounds. Yeah, like a like I don't think you know what you're talking about. Well, I don't <laughs> at all. You're, you're not from here. You're not from here. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's good. Hey, let's dive right into it. You are a Tamworth local, um, mm-hmm. but we want to dive into before CrossFit, the younger Georgia. Um, has it always been Tamworth? What What was your upbringing like? Uh, yeah, mostly Tamworth. I was born in Sydney, just outside of Sydney, um, and we lived there until I was five. And then we moved to Tamworth due to dad's work, and then I've been here ever since. So going on 20 years here now. Oh, nice. Mm. Fair play. What was, yeah. uh, what was life like in school? Were you playing other sports? I think we got a bit of background on you from Julia. You had a bit of gymnastics there. Yeah, gymnastics, definitely the main sport. Um, during like primary school, did sort of sport with the school, like, soccer and a bit of tennis and like cricket and stuff and you know how you just represent your school at like we called it northwest mm. things like that um but as gymnastics kind of got a little bit serious um and you level up it obviously takes up a lot more time so one you don't have the time for other sports and two you don't want to risk the injuries that are involved there as well mm. um so never really took any other sports as serious because of that so gymnastics yeah was the main focus from like, oh, I don't know, probably late primary school, maybe year five, year six, but then into high school, definitely um, was pretty occupied with gym, yeah. Oh, nice. Did you get to like a national level with gymnastics? Um, yeah, I made it to level 10. So there is 10 levels in like our stream. That's obviously not taken into consideration when you go to the Olympics and mm-hmm. you're like fully elite and stuff. Um, but yeah, the top of sort of as far as I could go, which was pretty cool. I think it's one of your goals when you start out gymnastics is want to make it to the top. So doing that was pretty cool. Uh, and I represented New South Wales um, at like a national championships in my last year. So that was pretty awesome. Oh, nice. Hmm. That's sick. I don't um, going from Sydney to Tamworth, I suppose you were really only just coming into school age, still pretty young, I guess. But if you have any recollection, how was that move from you going from big city into Tamworth? You would have been four. Um, yeah, I think yeah. I was like six months through kindy, so oh, nice. I don't really remember much besides the house that we lived in was really small and then being able to walk to and from school um, where we were. So moving from there to Tamworth, I don't know, it didn't seem like a huge change. I think it's just really hard leaving the friends that you already have, yeah. even from such a young age, and we were really close to like our next-door neighbours and stuff, so not having that anymore with the move here was a little bit different. Um, but yeah, at that age, I didn't really know much different, to be honest, as long as my family was with me, um, and my pets and whatnot, I feel like nothing else really changed. It was kind of cool getting to move houses and, you know, having a bigger backyard and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. You're away. I know. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So after college, um, high school, I don't know what you guys call it. High school? We'll go high school. (laughs) High school. Um, yeah. yeah. Sorry. We call it college over here. We don't call it high school. Yeah. Yeah. We go like college, then uni. Um, anyway, sorry, off track. After high school, um, what did you get up to after that? Did you go straight into CrossFit or did you go to university or? Uh, no, I never went to uni. So school wasn't really like my thing, I guess. I never really had any intentions of going to uni. I always knew I wanted to have a gap year and then sort of figure out what I wanted to do then. Mm. Um, so I retired from gymnastics about at 18. So year 12, I think that might be 11 or 12. Um, and I had a few friends doing CrossFit and I always knew I wanted to sort of keep fit and sort of fill in that hole that gymnastics, uh, has when you leave and CrossFit just seemed to be the next thing, obviously, cause you naturally want to go where your friends already are. So, um, I did that for a little bit and then Jake was just kind of like, you know, what are you doing? What are you up to? Do you want to like come train with us, with us competitors? So like Jake and, um, Lockie and Emma, a couple of them were coaches at the time and they were trying to compete in CrossFit. So I kind of mm. just had a lot of free time, no school anymore. I was coaching out at gymnastics at the time, um, but not like super full time. So I did have a lot of free time. So I just trained with those guys a lot um, and they were doing pretty hectic stuff. And me being a beginner, I was 
had no idea what I was doing really, but it was all <laughs> fun and um, they were very inviting. So that kind of is where it all started and it flourished from there. Um, and then, yeah, like I, I didn't go into CrossFit thinking I was going to be competitive or anything like that. Before I started, I had no clue what CrossFit was. I yeah. wouldn't have even been able to tell you a single movement that a CrossFitter would do. So it was all very, very new and it kind of just, um, I guess you could say, just like fell into place as time went on um, being a competitor in CrossFit. Yeah. Yeah, you say that, but I've got you down. So 2018, the first Open. Um, yep. But yeah, the next year, you're pretty much right up there. Um, yeah, it didn't yeah. take you long to, to become <laughs> super competitive. So how did the... How did the change go from not knowing what a CrossFit gym was to go like, yeah, now nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a good crack. Yeah, well, I suppose there is like a sequence of events um, that happened. Obviously, I had my first open in 2018, as you mentioned. Um, at the end of that year, I think was my first individual comp. So um, I think it was called the Aussie Throwdown at that point. So you had right. to qualify for it, an online qualifier, and then we went to Melbourne for the finals. Um, I was in the intermediate division and funny, I actually competed against Ellie Turner at that oh, true. comp and we were both intermediate oh, nice. and she t- maybe took out second and I was like fifth overall. So that was my first, I think, individual comp, like a big one that I had to sort of go away for. So mm. that was pretty cool. But then things, time sort of went on. Um, I remember going to the Torian Pro, maybe when it was something like a sanctionals or it might not even have been that, but it was at Pat Rafter mm. and how they do the stuff out the back. They had pairs out the back um, and like pro pairs, pro yeah, teams, yeah, whatever yeah, they yeah. did. My partner and then a coach, a former coach, were a pair out there. So I went along obviously to support. Um, and that was my first big comp that I witnessed besides Jake in regionals um, at 2018. Uh, and there they had to do the last open workout. So that comp oh, fell yeah, yeah. during the open and I they had to do yeah. the last yeah open workout was one of their events Mm. and i just remember that night like friday night lights sitting up in the crowd above the rig and watching down and seeing uh briani chalice competing Mm. and i just remember i don't know i just remember watching her and thinking that she's a similar age to me like that's pretty cool i wonder if i could be there and it looked pretty fun so that was the start of it and then uh i did one of the sanctions, maybe that wasn't a sanctional tour at the time because in Wollongong, they had the sanctionals. Yeah, there um, was one in Broadbeach and Wollongong. That one was just um just the Torian Pro because Tia was there for that one. Right, yeah, yeah. and Kara and stuff, yeah. Yeah, and they so, had the Pro Pairs as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that one. So that was like my first, yeah, kind of, so, oh, this is really cool. Maybe I could be down there on like a, such a big stage. Yeah. Um, But the following year, we went to... I must have been called down under as a team of four, like in the elite category. We came dead last, but it was cool to be out on a big stage <laughs> yeah. like that as well. That's cool. Um, and then my the year pr- prior to me actually being an Indian Victorian, we were a team of four at the back in the pro teams and we won that. So that was cool once again to be sort of around that big stage and being exposed to like such a big competitive comp as well. So I thought, you know, we've done pro teams and we just won that. What could be the next level besides elite teams um and that, that just for me was individual so it was kind of like okay like want to do it let's try jake was like you know you're coming with me or what and i said righto let's give it a crack and see how we go and then yeah 2022 20, i made it so yeah. that was my first year yeah how good how good um 2022 were you guys hpo hwpo then or was that before you guys made the switch uh that was definitely before um we were either training Think Tank or Mayhem. We kind of were between those a little bit before we stopped into HWPO. Nice. Are you still with HWPO now? Yep. I'm on the pro track, so currently doing the quarterfinal stuff, and then Jake's with his individualized programming. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how, how, how did you find the Open this year? Um, definitely different. Like, I feel like everyone was expecting the complex movements and heavy movements and stuff as – as it went on, which me too, I feel like that's kind of what we know from past years. Um, but without seeing that, it's still pretty cool that even if your specialty doesn't quite come out, you can still do okay. Or maybe even because it's so simple, it might be weaker hmm. uh, for you or for me at least. So it was kind of cool seeing that, you know, if it's not what I'd prefer to see, I can still do okay. So I'm happy with how it went. Yeah. Yeah. How do you view the open now? So 20, you've been doing the open for a while. Um, mm. th- this year is a bit different, even though it's the same format as last year. I do feel there's a bit of being a bit of a shift, like the way the workouts were. And I mean, fuck, 
anyone who's like in my category saying that you know they're too easy is lying because they're fucking hard <laughs> right. yeah, a 60 kg thruster for anyone is going to be fucking hard all right so just you know yeah. shut up for a second um but the, the shift has i feel like there was a bit of a shift more for the elites do you more see quarterfinals as the new open i guess that's sort of a bit of a trend that's going around yeah, I definitely think um, with quarterfinals, more rides on quarters than mm. it does with the Open. So I feel like that's probably the only way that it's changed. Like, yeah, you can look at the Open as it's easy, but as you said, like it's not. It's mm. maybe a little bit more plain, but doesn't mean it's easy. Like simple yet effective, right? Um, but I do think quarters is, yeah, just like the next step up, obviously, as you'd expect it to be. Um, and just because obviously that's the qualifying stage in the the number is so much smaller that qualifies it it um mm. means a lot more and yeah is more important so the open's good to just sort of brush out the cobwebs and sort of see where you are stacking up at that time and then mm. uh quarters is yeah obviously we got to drop the hammer and pretty much just send it yeah like you say it's more more plain because you, you get people every year going oh well if there was this in there i would have done it it's like well so you can't do burpees very well well you probably don't deserve to go to quarterfinals <laughs> mate you know like yeah if you can't do the plain That's stuff that. well then you know, does it, and I was, I was probably in that boat a few years ago. I'd be winning about it, but <laughs> then you take a step back and go, I'm just not fit enough. So let's just chill out. Yeah, it's easy to whinge about it when it comes out. Like I'm guilty of that too. Like I'm oh, yeah. not what I wanted, or blah blah blah. But at the end of the day, if you're good enough, you're going to be good enough mm. at everything, no matter what it is. So yeah, that's just how it goes, I guess. Mm. Yeah, that seems to be the whole emphasis on CrossFit is you can do anything to a decent standard at least. But yeah. Um, yeah, it sounds like the Open's more of a nuisance. It's more of just like something you got to do, like <laughs> registering in the first place. I like what yeah. Rich said. Rich said that it was good. It was good because now he can get some, he can get involved. Not that he's really doing competitions anymore, but he can get involved the community more because it's like he's probably yeah. going to go through the quarterfinals, so he can do the community stuff more with the gym. Whereas he's you know before he wouldn't have done that. So I think that's a good way of looking at it. The top athletes can get more involved in you know the the classes that are doing it and you know that friday night lights thing that that most gyms do so i reckon it's cool for the elites to be able to get involved um in that 100%, way. it changed for us this year too usually like you said we would probably do the workout you know as it's released sort of thing whereas mm. this year we did it with our members at friday night lights like we were the last heat to go so people yeah. were supporting us and, and getting to see what we do every day as well. Mm. I feel like often they don't quite maybe understand what we do or it's just cool for them to see it in the flesh rather than, you know, seeing snippets on social media or us just talking about it. They actually get to see um, us practice what we preach basically, mm. which was really cool. And I think it makes you stronger as a community um, than getting to watch and you getting to support and vice versa. 100%. 100%. 100%. And your guys' um, community does look pretty epic with, um, yeah. you know, yourself, Jake. We see Matt on um, quite a few bits and pieces <laughs> online. He seems like a good laugh, eh? But um, give, <laughs> give us the Tamworth 101. What's what's Tamworth like as a, as a s small town? Would you say it's a small town? Like, what's what's the population there? Uh, I think we're around maybe like 40,000. I wouldn't say it's small. Like, I mm. think we're, um, what do you call it? Like a city town yeah, yeah there's a better word but you know what i mean so we're not like super small um we have everything that we need we're not really missing out on anything bar a beach so we're, <laughs> yeah yeah not not super small but definitely more on the countryside i guess than city yeah yeah yeah. so yeah i think as a community we're a little bit closer in in that regards and there's not tons of crossfit gyms around so there's maybe three or four of us so um you know, we're not spreading or our CrossFit community in general is not being spread super thin. So you can kind of have a tight knit and strong, solid community on your own gym and then between the rest of the gyms around as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm grateful. I love it here. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the, the beach is a little bit, little more than a stone's throw away. But um, yeah. what's if, if Tamworth was to be known for something, what would you say that is for, for us uh, uh, Kiwis over, overseas? The big golden guitar, like just country music. I was going to say, oh. were you setting her up? Because Julia said it's the country music capital of Australia. It is, yeah. Right. Yeah, it is. So that happens at the start of every year, like throughout you know, the hottest weeks of the year, basically, through yeah. Australia Day. Yeah, yeah 10 days. Yeah. I, was just trying to, I was just trying to Google what a small city would be called, but I couldn't get any results. <laughs> I was trying to, yeah. I was trying to go, there's got to be a I'll name. As soon as we hang up, I'll think of it and I'll message you. Yeah, radio, Sweet ass. Um, so do you get into a bit of country yourself? Uh, oh, 
it's actually funny. I would have strongly said hard no to that any other time you asked, but in the past maybe like six months, I feel like, you know, the country's changing a little bit or maybe I'm just being exposed to a different side of country I never really Morgan, knew. Morgan Mullen came like along, eh? Yeah, that's good looking right. Lad. Like him and that sort of vibe is <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. but yeah. You're like you're slim, dusty and stuff, I probably would never yeah. put that in yeah. there. Not, not not that Beyonce country. Uh, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of that one. Bro. No, <laughs> I'm I'm feeling yeah, about a. Got... I don't know if you call it country, but I'm feeding Teddy swims at the moment, eh? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Teddy's good. good. Yeah. Nice. You look like you had something to say there. Just... Nah, nothing, man. Absolutely <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Um, yeah, just to take it away from CrossFit for a second. Obviously, you're a high level, uh, high performing athlete. But um, we want to take it away and get to know you a bit more. What's uh, what's a day in the life look like for you? Run us Hard to take away from CrossFit. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a lot of CrossFit <laughs> involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so not much at the moment. Um, I live with my partner, Toby, in his house. We've got three pets, so two dogs. We've got an English Mastiff, so one of those big, mm. like, drooly, sloppy nice. ones. <laughs> yeah. um, and then a rescue dog, so he's a bit a bit of everything. We're not exactly sure what he is. And then we have a cat that was a stray that we found at the tennis court, so we just claimed him. So mm. those are our animals. Um, besides, obviously, working, work full-time at Snakes, so working and training there, do that a lot. Um, but if you ask what I did outside of that, it would be spending time with the friends that I have made through CrossFit, mm. uh, camping. We love the good games night, things like that. Um, yeah, not a lot. Really? Yeah. Just a lot of crossfit. <laughs> it, it was yeah. it was sort of leading though. I was going to say that um, on your socials, bar the crossfit, you seem to be very family and friend orientated. Um, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. How how do you go about making time for friends and family? Because I know you got to commit a lot of your life. Yeah, you definitely do have to commit to crossfit. Um, but I think it's just being like organised and aware of your time and where you can spend that time. Um, obviously, people that don't do crossfit and have you know their regular work lives and things like that are only really free on the weekends. So I take that into consideration and I'll try and our training's pretty consistent with the blocks of time that we do train morning and afternoon. So uh, I'll try and organize some things that I know is going to suit after training or sometimes you do just have to shuffle it. You know, if I've got a big training day on Saturday, I might have to make it one big session so I can make, you know, a wedding the Saturday afternoon or whatever it might be. Sometimes you do just have to not exactly sacrifice, but just shuffle things so you can get the both best of both worlds because, um, yeah, I, I'd want to consider the people as well as the sport. I'd never want to lose one for the sake of the other. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, just being aware of it. Sometimes you can't make everything, and I think if you've got the right friend group, they're going to understand that as well. Um, but also you can't just keep taking and not always giving too. So I think it's just finding the balance most of the time, trying to fit things in and honestly just being aware of your time and being more organised and, Sometimes you have to be selfless. Maybe you didn't get home with two hours between training sessions like you'd prefer. You might only have an hour between because you've, you know, gone caught up with a friend or whatever it might be. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty lucky that most of my friends are through CrossFit anyway. So they're, I'm seeing them through training and whatnot. Um, and mum and dad and my sister and brother live here. My brother doesn't live here anymore. But um, – so they're easy to see. I can just go pop around to the house and catch up with them. So yeah, I'm pretty lucky in that respect that it's it's not super hard to stay in contact with everybody. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I, I love that outlook of not sacrificing one for the other because both are very important to both yeah. like, your mental and spiritual health, I would assume. Mm. Yep, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Um, so going off, um, I'll bring it back to CrossFit. <laughs> going off um, <laughs> last year's Torian, well, the year before you come 10th and then last year you come 7th. So you're tracking in the yeah. right way. Um, what sort of things have you changed in the last 12 months um, to attack this season? Because I know um, I've talked about maybe not saying this, but I'm going to say it. The field's quite open this year. Ellie's not there. Yeah. DeRoy's gone team and Tia's in, and Cara. Uh, Cara's gone team, Tia's in America. So the floor's quite open. Um, are you taking that in consideration? And yeah, what changes have you made since last year that, to track more towards the podium this year? Um, I think just working on my weaknesses. So for me, that is strength. So definitely strength has always been a focus, but still is a focus. Um, but at the same time, keeping like my gymnastics still at a high level. So once again, just not sacrificing one for the sake of the other. So we're trying to keep it relatively even and just bring up that strength. Um, and in terms of the open field, yeah, like it's 
I don't know, anything could happen really. I mean, there's definitely people that are amazing and are going to do super, super well. But at the same time, I don't know, like it's been so long since the field's been like this. Mm. Honestly, anything could happen in like in terms of programming, what happens there. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I, I, I'm very excited to be a competitor. So fingers crossed I make it. But at the same time, I'm really excited to just see how it plays out and see how all the girls go, see what the results are. Um, cause for the past few years, it's kind of been, you know, two spots. You're like, Oh, I know who's going to make those. Let's see who the third is. But this year it's like all three spots. Who's it going to yeah. be? You just don't know. So yeah, I'm really excited for it. I think it'll be a really, really good year. Oh yeah. Harder. Even Jamie's gone. I forgot Jamie Cinnamon. So all three yeah. of last year's podium finishes, um, aren't, <laughs> aren't competing this year so mm. yeah. yeah 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 it's crazy yeah. it's pretty wild um going on last year i did see that quite a few of the snake crew yourself included headed over to um the states to watch jack jack jesus jake compete <laughs> at the crossfit games yeah. um was that your first time in the states that was my second time in the state so i went over with gymnastics we did a tour back in 2016 to compete so we went to Vegas and LA there. Uh, so this is my second time back, um, but I'd never been to Madison or Wisconsin or anything. So super yeah. grateful. Like it was amazing. I had the best time and I'm really glad I went, obviously because Jake was competing, but it being the last year in Madison, um, yeah. getting to experience that and the Coliseum and that whole vibe. Yeah, it was like something I'll never, ever forget. It was yeah. amazing. The time of my life. Yeah. yeah it's cool um, hearing that when you went to Torian for the first time, that sort of gave you the itch to start taking this seriously and start having a real crack at this since going mm. to the games last year what would it mean to you to qualify for the games this year yeah once again it's just that vibe i think watching it being in the coliseum and seeing the girls out on the floor just imagining how it would feel down there i think it's something you just want to experience once at least in your lifetime so as of, like it's obviously an amazing achievement getting there in itself but the feeling i think it would give being down on the floor surrounded by so many people in such a cool environment and so many amazing athletes at the same time. Yeah, I think it would just be a huge vibe. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I know. Um, last year you did down under, a. Eh? Yep. Yeah. Do you see that as um, what you just said there? Like, obviously, you're not being surrounded by the Americans. Obviously, it's, it's very localized to New Zealand and Australia, but you, are you seeing that on the same sort of level as well, like testing yourself to see how this season is going to go using that competition? Yeah, definitely. And because it's so far from uh, our actual season, like Torian Pro, you've got mm. time to work on your weaknesses and strengths and stuff. So it's a good gut check again to then see where you're at with what you've been working on um, yeah. and then time again to continue working or change things before the Open does come around again. So, yeah, it's a great time of year. Just a little checkpoint, a little check-in piece again before you start again. And, mm. um, yeah, as we saw, like heaps of new girls or you know people that didn't go india touring that we haven't seen in a bit come back going individually so it's kind of a different nearly a different field of athletes again so it's yeah just cool to check in and see where you're at yeah um just on that um how how was jake's back after that he he got quite injured didn't he yeah he did so he's still a, dealing with it here and there um he's got a good crew around him mm. trying to like support him and recover with that touch wood going all right <laughs> wasn't great before the open so that kind of like, you know, flipped his plans a little bit and whatnot. But so far, so good. He's been able to train a whole lot better now. It's just sort of managing it and um, doing what he can around it without flaring it up, I guess. But yeah, it wasn't ideal when it happened. Yeah, no, it was um, pretty out of the blue because he said he did it on the sandbag and even watching that event, it didn't look like he'd hurt himself. He's such a weapon, obviously. But um, yeah. Mm, yeah, he must have must have hurt it badly for him to actually want to pull out because yeah, he's, he's a bit of a warrior, eh? Yeah, 100%. And I think that being the first workout and probably the lightest thing you're going to lift from the floor all weekend is, mm. yeah, it was a bit too much to risk at that time considering, you know, the year ahead and his goals for the future. Mm. How good. Um, so looking forward to this season, the Open's done. We've seen the team quarterfinal workouts. That sort of gives you a little bit of a an idea for what Indies is going to look like. I mean, going off last year, it was pretty much a, a, a copy-paste, but less three people. Um, yeah. How are you tracking towards quarterfinals? Is the training start to intensify? Uh, yeah, it will. Uh, we're currently in a deload week this week, so that's been quite nice. But yeah. it is interesting to have the teams uh, be released before us. We're, that's hard again, though, whether or not we're going to be similar to them or mm. totally flipped, who knows. But it is interesting, I guess, not to see 
still the max lift or too high of complex of um, movements. But at the same time, if you're expanding the category to 25%, you can't really make it a top 1% workout, if you know what I mean. Like you've got to still include everybody. So I think they've done that uh, really, really well from looking at the teams. So it'd be interesting to see if it's still a theme throughout quarters leading into semis as well, or if semis will be two or three steps up again. Do, do you, point, do you think that that's um, a good thing though? And like, I'm, I say that because you'll get these, if say there's no massive tests, right? And you get mm. this team go through to semifinals and then they throw in, you know, something crazy and then none of them can do it. You know, do, do, do you find that a good thing? Or I suppose it doesn't really matter to you, obviously. I mean, this is not even your division, but yeah, do, do, you, do you think it's a good thing that maybe they should be testing them a bit more in quarterfinals? Yeah, I feel like it relates to indies as well. Um, mm. And I think that just comes down to programming. If this is the way that they're programming through the open and quarters, it's got to be consistent through to the semis. Otherwise, you know, the tests, I guess, you know, aren't really reliable, if that makes sense. So, yeah, it would be a little bit maybe unfortunate or unideal if the tests are as they are and then at semis it's like handstand pirouettes on P-bars or something yeah. insane <laughs> that... These guys are like, holy moly, what are we doing right now? Don't even own um, pirouettes. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, like, what is going on right now? So, mm. yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I don't really know how it'll go, but mm. at the same time, it is what it is. What can we do? Just be better, I guess. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say that to a lot of my, especially at the 5 a.m. because I'm really not yeah, keen to be there. <laughs> they'll be like, what should I do? I'm sorry. What? Oh, they'll go, they'll say sorry. And I'll be like, don't be sorry, be better. He's a fantastic coach. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, they, they love it. <laughs> no, I hope they love it. They keep paying. So. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, doing something right. Yeah. yeah. The, no, more, right the, the more you get to know Matt, the more brutal he gets, and it's just like, oh sweet, <laughs> yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. That's why Beef had to text you while I was late because I wouldn't have. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I, was, I was fuming. I was fuming. Um. Yeah, I have a bit of a bit of a funny story. Um, last year at the Pro, I, I have actually met you before. Um, very briefly, you're, I think you're yeah. headed downstairs. And I, and I was walking with um, Aiden. He's with uh, CrossFit Papa Moore. And we we're just, just having a yarn. So, you know, sort of picking his brain, seeing how he's feeling and whatnot, giving him a bit of support. And then he's like, sweet, bro, I'm going to go down. And I was like, all good, said goodbye. And then I was on I was on a mission to just get photos with all the athletes like uh, like any athlete i was just like fanboy anyway um <laughs> he was about three steps down the staircase and i just turned to go back to my seat to get ready to come out uh watch him come out and i seen you and i was like aiden aiden come back <laughs> i need someone to take the photo <laughs> this man's about to go compete he was on an elite Wait, team can we get a photo together yeah yeah, yeah we got a photo that's <laughs> somewhere but um, yeah, no, nah, that was hilarious. But I, I just can't. I I remember afterwards just thinking to myself, how cringe. Like, mm. grown man, like, come back, take a photo. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to ask because obviously I would assume you get that quite a bit along with the rest of the athletes. Um, do you have any sort of like, X within the CrossFit community that you're like, oh, oh. god, here we go. Like people are just doing <laughs> shit, and you're just like, oh, like wish you wouldn't. Like is. Is the attention too much? Do you get sick of it or, you know, what's going on there? Um, no, I, I'm very humbled whenever anybody wants a photo anywhere. It, I feel like it still just comes as a bit of a shock sometimes. Like, oh, like me? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it, no, it's good. I, I do appreciate that. And so far, no icks. Not that I can think of at the top of my head. Like everyone's really like welcoming and encouraging. And it's one of the things I love about CrossFit, you know, like there's never, no one's really ever against you. Yeah. In in team sports like footy or something, you might the opposite team's um supporters might boo you or something like that, but obviously you'll never find that in CrossFit. So yeah, at this point there's no negative experiences. So touch wood, let's hope it stays like that. Very good. Very good. And and you're yeah. so right. We we don't um bring the other athletes down, you just get more behind yours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Um yeah, that that was <laughs> All fucking weekend, not just you, right? He was my cameraman, was, most of it. Man, I was there. And he's like, oh, bro, bro, bro. I'm like, fuck me, dude, man. Like, I don't want to do this at all. Um, but yeah, that was all right. All good. <laughs> good fun. 
Oh, hard out, hard out. Anyway, hey, um, man, I lost my train of thought. Okay. Looking forward to Torian. Now, I've, I've tried to stop doing this because I know you have to qualify for Torian. Mm. What, and I know you sort of glaze over this, but what, what is the goal? Like, is it, is, are we, are you laser focused that making the games this year is, is 100% the goal? Oh, uh, well, I think if there's a year to do it, as you said, this is kind of it. So, mm. Yeah, we're going to try pretty hard, obviously. Mm. Um, but I still, I just want to do better than I have previous years. So, I mean, at this point in time, better than seventh is pretty close up there. So that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, if it happens, it happens. Like, yeah, I'll be, you know, over the moon and whatnot. But even if it doesn't, once again, like I said, I'm just super excited to see how it does play out. Mm. Um, but yeah, of course, that's at the end of the day, that is the goal. And that's what we're working towards. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I'm a bit of a, a bit of a quotes man, and I saw a quote the other day that I was just saved for the next guest, and it just happened to be you. Um, came in clutch, by the way, too. We only messaged you yesterday, so yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for that. Cheers for like the last notice. <laughs> thanks on. for having me. We had, we had two pull out this week. Well, one postponed to next week, and then oh. I was like, well, we were always going to get round to messaging you. I was like, well. It's now or never. So. That's fun. That's I'm lucky. Yeah, yeah. No, appreciate it. Yeah, but um, yeah, I saw a quote uh, and it says, often the lessons we need to learn are in the tasks we're avoiding. Mm. I, I just thought that was magic. So I do want to ask, if you can pick one, uh, what's a significant, Jesus, come on, what's a significant moment in your life that you took a valuable lesson from? Holy. Um, mm. Could like crossfit, not crossfit, just anything? anything? Whatever. Anything. Oh, God. Be fast like, and do this. Spot. It goes deep. Oh, yeah, I'll put everyone on the spot. <laughs> what have I taken a big, a big, learn a big lesson from? Um. Oh, that's tough. Mm. Jeez. Can't pause this, can we? Nah. Can't take a little intermission, no? <laughs> nah. Uh, <laughs> Quick snack break. I, I think maybe as like, probably wasn't a big, you know, moment but as a kid um just knowing or like having empathy for other people i think hmm. you know you might get picked on or someone says something to you and you're like oh my god that really hurt my feelings i don't like the way that felt so then you can put yourself in somebody else's shoes when it's maybe happening to them or you know you might say something like oh hang on a minute that's you know probably not the right way to hmm. go about this or to say something to somebody so i think um, yeah, just considering other people's feelings is big when you're talking to them, giving them advice, things like that. Especially as a coach too, throughout the gym, I think it helps. Um, just take when you're care of their to feelings. Someone, you don't want to Fuck. S- yeah, like consider their feelings. Fuck, no, I don't know, <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> I'd change everything, man. You know, it's not like super soppy and whatever, but rather than just telling them their shit, you can say, try this instead, you know, or you did this really well. I don't know. Are you listening, bro? That's the only thing I can Hang on, let me <laughs> take some fucking notes here, man. <laughs> Still don't. be better, but try yeah. to be better this way, you know. Man management. I found that key. <laughs> some some, some athletes froth on that, you know, being told straight yeah. up. But yeah, 90% of them don't. Yeah. Um, no, that was a hard question. So, so, sorry, I couldn't give you something better. Like no, it was a good. cool story I've had, but... No, it was good. That was a, that was a money answer. I like to um, you know, pick pick the brains of all our guests, so it's good. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. It's pretty much similar to what Shane Orr said a couple of weeks back. Um, same yeah. thing, like just just changing the way you say things to athletes can have a huge impact. Um, yeah. Yeah. One of the ones I took away from him um, was like, don't don't say negative things in the sentence because they'll only hear the negative part, and it doesn't have to be complete negative. It's like, don't let go. It's like, don't is a negative so instead just say hold on and i thought that's that's pretty massive so it's like you yeah. yeah it's not a massively negative thing but it's a negative way to approach a situation um mm-hmm. yeah it's cool to hear that kind of stuff from from coaches um such as him and yourself like we're glazing over that you are you have been coaching for a while like you said you've been doing gymnastics coaching um and crossfit coaching how are you finding that do you think that's a route you'll want to go down when you sort of retire from the sport of crossfit I feel like I'd probably still dabble in it here and there. Um, uh, Yeah, like I love it and I love the people that I'm constantly surrounded by. But maybe as a lifelong thing, I'd probably want to try something different just because I have been doing it for so long um, Mm. and see what else is out there and expand my horizons and whatnot. But 
yes, I think it's still, as long as I'm a part of Snake, it's somewhere where I would always want to be being work or training. So if I could, I'd still have some sort of involvement work-wise because it is fun too. It's fun teaching and coaching people and making those connections and whatnot. Mm. So yeah, if I could, I'd love to have a part there forever. Did you ever have anything else in mind? I know at the moment it's hard to think of anything else except CrossFit because it's such a goal this year. Um, but has there ever been anything else you thought you might want to um, have a crack at outside of CrossFit? Yeah. Um, oh, Sport-wise, I always really enjoyed athletics, um, like sprinting, 100, 200, long jump, mm. and Oztag. So sports, if I ever stopped CrossFit and wasn't worrying about getting injured or whatnot, I'd probably try those two or like maybe more of a team sport. Mm. Um but like occupation wise, um, I thought it would be pretty cool to have my own business one day, um, and maybe just falling into the realm of CrossFit, like activewear or something like that, or oh, yeah. you know, collabing with a really big brand that's one of my sponsors would be really cool. But <laughs> oh, nice. that wouldn't be <laughs> that wouldn't be that's not happening. But I wouldn't be LSKD, would it? <laughs> LSKD would be awesome. But you know, just one crop top in my name or something would be cool. But yeah, I kind of like that sort of design aspect. Mm. So. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, no. That's well, cool. We're going to clip that and we're going to send it to them. We're like, hey guys, <laughs> <laughs> let's get the prior range going, eh? <laughs> yeah. My contract ended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. <No. laughs> we won't be reimbursing you for that. <laughs> yeah. That's um, that's a pretty cool segue into Jack's question. I don't know. Do, do we roll into Jack's question? Yeah. Let's let's roll in. So yeah. Okay. So this is Jack Jeffrey putting you on the spot here, not me. Okay. Um. He would like to know, what's one profession you think you could last a day in the job without training? That's a good question. And he, also, he also prefaced it with, don't say anything boring that anyone <laughs> oh. can do, like be like a pr- profession. That's straight where I was going, like gardener or something. Yeah. <laughs> something <laughs> that like um, you would have what? normally would study for years to be good at. Oh, yeah. Shivers. <laughs> okay. Another one on the spot. That's a good question. I wonder if he Googled that or not. Um, wow. Well, definitely not like doctor or anything like that. <laughs> what do you even have to study for these days? <laughs> Fucking everything. Um, yeah. <laughs> Maybe some sort of, oh, I guess I was going to say like a race car driver, but you probably don't have to study for that. Yeah, but that would well, take, that would take a yeah. lot of, I mean, I'm pretty sure I could jump in and, and take Max for stepping down, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> imagine they train a bit. Race car driving, yeah. yeah? You didn't say we didn't say we'd have to be good. We just have to last a day. Yeah, but you got to be competitive. All right, race car. What what kind of race car are you in? <laughs> where are we going with this? I have no idea. I just looked out the window and saw my own car, so that's where I went. <laughs> Do you what drive a race car? You got like a fucking McLaren out there? Or? <laughs> no, I've got a little Holden Astra, but it's got a turbo and it just goes oh, pretty fast so. that's it yeah sign her up we'll, yeah. we'll get her on the rally cool. wrc all right yeah no, i want to know maybe what like a, maybe a dentist you could say actually dentist. i feel like that would be mm. okay you regular patient you're just cleaning you, i could probably just clean mm. don't they have the highest suicide rate of all professions whoa oh. where the <laughs> fuck did that go from? that's a random one eh? i heard that, <laughs> that thanks for that bro <laughs> anyway <Maybe> um <laughs> is everything all right <laughs> <laughs> oh man so sometimes the intrusive thoughts do get through <laughs> get um better of you. <laughs> yeah no i did read that somewhere anyway okay so race um, car driver let's no or dentist did, or did you go dentist uh ignoring both. my sentence <laughs> would you still be a dentist <laughs> that's very interesting i didn't know that i could have just made yeah. that up i feel like this is hard because people listening if there's a dentist listening they're like, nah. They're going to think I'm such an idiot. Like, not a chance. You wouldn't even know how to put your scrubs on correctly. So. Oh, if there are any dentists listening, first of all, sorry, you're not suicidal. Yeah. But um, the other thing is, George is keen for a day to come down <laughs> and start scraping yeah, some teeth. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. There you go. Tamworth's own. Actually, maybe a masseuse. Okay. Dental, yeah. dental like and masseuse? Study. Pardon? <laughs> like... Dental and masseuse, like you double. Oh, like, yeah. That's a like, that's a good business now. Getting stress out of the shoulders yeah. while you're brushing teeth, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we might be onto something here. All right. Oh, okay. Hey, that's your new business. There we go. Yeah. Georgia Pryor. 
Too thin. What would you call it? Oh, it's going to be something cool. Anyway, I need to chill out. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Listen, um, we've probably taken up enough of your time here. Um, it's a good 40 minutes. Um, but yeah, good to know that you can be a race car driver, dentist, masseuse, all over it. Yeah. Confidence. Yeah. Anyway, um, before Got we it. end things completely, is there anyone you want to give uh, a bit of a shout out to before we go? Um, there would definitely be a lot. My family, mum, dad, sister, my partner, Toby, um, my crew that always hangs in there and trains with me whenever mm. they get the chance and we can all hurt together. My bestie, Kato, um, the girls, and then all my sponsors, of course, LSKD, Frog Grips, ATP, Live Fit, Sports Dietitian, Nice. Um, SMAI. Yeah. yeah. What What is SMAI? I did click on them, but it was it was mainly like fight sports. What What are they? Yeah, they do a lot of that, like martial arts and boxing and stuff. But they right. are just general gym equipment. So they do CrossFit gear as well, like floor balls and rigs and okay, probably a bit of everything. Yeah. Nice. And I saw yeah. Paddy, Paddy Orr was down there. Is he Does he represent you? Yep, yeah. he does through Oracle Sports. So hopefully him and Benny Watson are going to come up. Probably the start of quarters, mm-hmm. so in two weeks, yeah, catch up with them. It's been a bit. Nice, sweet as. Mm. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. Good we might, there. we might try and catch up with um you guys. We're we're yeah. we're looking at coming over a little bit early before the pro, but um. Oh yeah. We'll, we'll iron out the details later. Yeah, bit of a road yeah, trip very... from Melbourne, but we do want to go up through Tamworth. Yeah, yeah. yeah so Mel- it was Melbourne. So yeah, I don't want to put the S in there. It was, I think, <laughs> yeah, Melbourne's. Anyway, we've got a bit of a, a roadmap we're trying to get through, but Snake Athletic yeah, is, cool. is on the list, so hopefully you get it. Nice. There. Yes. Um, very good. Yeah. Hopefully you guys are on a massive deload, and if I jump in for a workout, <laughs> I won't die. Did you? When we did this originally last year, we used to end the show with a with a workout that the guests would mm. give us. <laughs> yep. Did you, did you see yep. Jake's? Uh, yeah. Was it? Was it machines? Lots of machines? Yeah, it was a 40-minute EMOM. And oh. it was, so 10 rounds. Minute one was 15 calories on the assault bike. Minute two was some lunges or GHDs, alternating rounds. And then max shuttle runs. And he goes, oh, it's just like a real easy one, a little blowout. Man, he's like, you have to hold 550 watts on the bike too. Oh, oh my God. That guy lasted five, four rounds, I think. <laughs> and then dropped to like 12 calories and did whatever watts I could fucking imagine, like try to get oh out. Oh my God. Yeah, God. Yeah, rough. What a machine. Oh, yeah, that's why we changed to a question. Because like yeah. we were, <laughs> man, yeah, we were getting some brutal work. That, that's actually the workout you're doing when we go to Snake, so. It's not. <laughs> yeah, surprise. <laughs> it's just a blowout. I was just, just deload. I'm like, cool. Fucking hell. You so know. good. Hey, um, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate you coming on the last yeah. minute, like we said. And um, Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, 100%. Awesome. Either way, we'll see you uh, somewhere around Torian. So best of luck for quarterfinals, and uh, we hope to see you, you out on the competition floor. Thank you so Easy. much. No worries. All right, see you, mate. Bye. Bye.